Hey guys, hey there, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is Winning Wednesday. Are y'all ready for this today? It is Business Topic Week. And so we are talking about a business topic today to help enhance your business, your growth, your knowledge, your information when it comes to owning and operating your small business as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur. And so here on my channel, on my Winning and Living Golden uh, YouTube channel, I come in every Wednesday. Lord willing, I'll be able to come in every Wednesday and share with you information and tools, like I said, resources, um, tips that will help you to grow um, in all aspects of your life as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, and a nonprofit. Um, so on the first Wednesday we come in, wait, let me start over. Let me start over because for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Lisa L. McLean. I'm a certified financial education instructor. So I'm a CFEI. I own several businesses. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur and a small business owner for over 20, gosh, over 25 years now. Um, and I've, I'm actually doing this full time. And so um, this is one of the things that I do. I come in and share free information, free content to help um, small business owners like me, entrepreneurs to grow, to live golden. Um, and so on the first Wednesday, I come in and I talk about life topics. On the second winning Wednesday, we come in and I'm talking to you about finance. It could be personal finances. It could be business finance um, topics. On the third Wednesday, I come in and I help us grow in our spirit. So I'm, an, I'm also an ordained minister and have been for many years. And so I've been teaching and um, speaking and um, worshiping um, with uh, uh, songs of encouragement and inspiration for years. And so um, on that third Wednesday, I come in and share that information and that's word and worship with Lisa. And then we come back on the fourth Wednesday, we're talking business. And that's what we're doing today. We're talking business today, something to help, help us um, just get that, that information and, and more knowledge around this topic of business. So I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you decided to come in and, and join me today on this episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you to those who have already subscribed to my Winning and Living Golden cha uh, channel on YouTube. And also to those who have not yet subscribed, but you're about to click that subscribe button. You're going to like, you're going to share. <laughs> thank you for the comments. Please comment in the comment section. I'll be glad to see those comments and also uh, respond um, to, the, to the comments in the comment section. So let's dive in. Are y'all ready for business topic today? So this week, and thanks to one of my new clients, the a question was, was posed to me. Well, why do I have to register my business? Why can't I just, you know, start, you know, conducting business and making my sales and, you know, doing my thing? This this uh, specific client is um, interested in creating a clothing brand. And so they asked me that question and I was just like, um, yeah, <laughs> let me dive into this because I'm sure that this question's probably come up um, many times with others who have that desire to um, do business, um, you know, and in my case, I, I live in the state of Florida. My businesses are uh, registered in the state of Florida. So I'll be talking specifically about the state of Florida as it relates to registering your business. But I want to make sure that we know why I want to, I want to make sure we know why it's required or when it's required. Also, um, we're going to be talking about, um, the advantages of registering your business, right? specific situations. I'll give us some specific examples of um, when you should register your business. And then I'll talk about um, when it's required to register your business with the federal government and also with local agencies. And then I'll um, give you some examples also of how I formed my businesses as uh, sole proprietorships or LLCs over the years. So let's jump in. Are y'all ready for this good, tasty topic today? 
Registration, what is it? What does that mean? Registering your business is a formal act of filing your business with the state or with the federal government or with the local agency. So registering your business, it establishes it as a legal entity. So that's what registration is. Are you required to register your business with the state of Florida was the question that my new client <laughs> posed to me. And so the answer is it depends. It depends on the business and it also depends on whether you are conducting business in that state. So let's dive into that. Let's let's go deeper into that um, that question about whether you're required to register your business with the state of Florida. If you're not creating a separate business entity, right? If you are conducting business um, as yourself using your own legal name, then you are not required to register your business because you are operating as yourself. The reason why you will want to register your business is if you're creating a separate legal entity that is not your own name and that is for identification purposes so um it saves you a step in the process if you are a sole proprietorship or um you're not separating your um your business from yourself it'll definitely save you a, a small step in the process of of having to register and it'll save you a few dollars as well but if you do not register your business, say as a LLC, as a limited liability company, you could actually miss out on liability protection and also certain tax benefits. So that's something to keep in mind. For instance, when I, um, you know, even though I conduct one of my businesses under my legal name, under Lisa LaShawn McLean, under Lisa L. McLean, I still registered that business um, as, a, as my legal name as an LLC. And I did that for the benefit of the liability protection. Um, conversely, my oldest business um, is a sole proprietorship and it still is. I've had this business, uh, started this business in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I have been an entrepreneur and um, a small business owner since the 90s for over over 25 years now. So Lisa LaShawn Music is my Christian music creation side where I create original Christian songs, um, perform them, sell CDs, sell apparel. Um, and so that is still a sole proprietorship. I chose not to uh, set that up as an LLC um, because it, I, well, well, it's not an LLC, but it is a sole proprietorship, but I'm doing a DBA. So I set it up with a fictitious name. I registered a fictitious name with the state of Florida, Lisa LaShawn Music. Since that's not my legal, my, my full legal name, um, I had to register that as a fictitious name with the state of Florida. And so um, with that business, that's how I operated. I operated as Lisa LaShawn McLean or Lisa L. McLean, DBA, doing business as Lisa LaShawn Music. And that's what I do for, for that business. And that's my only, uh, no, it's not my only sole proprietorship. I have a, my publishing company, uh, Wellheart Publishing is also a sole proprietorship where I have um, a fictitious name for that. But for those two businesses, because of the work that I do in them, there's not um, going to be instances really of where I might be sued for something. I don't have any employees under those businesses. And we'll get into some of those other um, reasons as to why you would want to set up a separate legal entity for a business. So I just wanted to give you that example. Um, but then when it comes to my rental property, I form LLCs for that business stream of income. And so note that multiple LLCs are a common strategy for uh, landlords, for rental property owners. Um, and that helps to ensure that the financial problems with one rental property <laughs> doesn't jeopardize the other rental properties. And that's why you will separate, you would actually create individual LLCs for each rental property. And so in my case, I would um, uh, set up the LLC and I, one example or one um, suggestion rather is to set up the LLC in the name of the street address 
for that rental property. And it just kind of helps to identify it um, when you're having to differentiate between one rental property and the other. Um, but it helps to have those multiple LLCs and setting up those LLCs helps to make sure that your, your financial problems, again, with one doesn't, doesn't affect the other. Um, and then it also um, helps you <laughs> not jeopardize your own life savings and investments and assets, um, your personal um, items. And so we'll get into to that as well. I didn't, I didn't want to, with this specific teaching today, the goal is not to talk about the individual um, business types, the sole proprietorship, the LLC, the corporation, the partnership, um, and even the tax classification of an S-Corp. I wasn't going to get into those details. However, I do believe that I'll probably do another separate teaching, um, probably on our business topic week, um, that fourth Wednesday, um, on the different um, business types what the benefits and, and um, advantages or disadvantages are of each of those business types when you would want to have a sole proprietorship and LLC and that sort of thing. So um, that's not what this teaching is today for, but I am just kind of diving in just a little bit deeper to give you some examples um, and benefits of the LLC. Um, that's one of the businesses that I have more um, instances of with um, prospective prospective clients as well as my current clients. So forming an LLC gives your business its own legal entity. Like I said, if you're going to set up um, a business that is separate from you and that is not your legal name, that's what you would want to do, separate, set up a separate legal entity. And that's what forming an LLC does. In the eyes of the law, it makes that business a separate person, if you will. And that separate person, that business can own money, it can own property, it can have a bank account. Um, matter of fact, if you want a bank account for your LLC, you'll have to have it established as a separate entity. Um, and then you'll have to um, also have an EIN, and we'll talk about that a, a little bit further along as we talk about the federal agencies. Um, but also um, that, that separate entity, that separate person, that LLC can make agreements. It can sue people and it also can be sued. So because of this, um, your, your business creditors can't go after your own money, your own assets um, that are not owned by the LLC. So your home, your bank account, your personal bank account, your other personal assets are protected so by contrast, when you operate a sole proprietorship, like I was telling you about my business, Lisa LaShawn Music, and my publishing company, Wealth Heart Publishing, um, if, if it's a sole proprietorship, if it's a general partnership, then you and your business are, are not legally separate. You're one in the same. You're, you're one. And so everything you own in those instances is at risk. So this is why it's important to register your business. Um, there are also limits. There are limits on LLC liability protection. So you can still be liable, personally liable, if someone sues you for your own negligence or your own wrongdoing, um, even if the accusations are related to your business. So keep that in mind. And that is one reason why um, insurance is necessary, is essential. So an LLC doesn't protect your assets if you personally guarantee a contract or a loan. So a lot of my small business clients, um, when they're first getting started, are using personal um, guarantees for business credit. Um, basically, the credit card company it you know might issue you a credit card that has the name of the business on it, but your personal, you're giving your own personal social security number, your own personal guarantee for that business credit card. So that's just another example of when you're, you know, forming an LLC as a separate business is not going to protect that, that personal guarantee. Um, or, you know, if you sign a contract with your name on it, <laughs> then the LLC is not going to, that, that business entity type is not going to afford you that liability protection in those instances. And also want to protect you, or rather it won't protect the business itself from losing everything in a fire or a flood or a lawsuit 
um, or, you know, in economic downturn. So just because you're registering the business doesn't mean that it's protecting you from everything. But, you know, just kind of keep in mind the situations and the circumstances that that where that applies. Please feel free to come back and review this teaching again and um, just make sure that we understand what an LLC can do, protect you from, and what it can't. Um, again, insurance is essential. <laughs> insurance is, is there to protect you and the business against unexpected uh, circumstances. So the other um, reason, I, I, I think I gave you two, yeah, two um, basically reasons why you will be required to register your business in the state of Florida. And one was, it depends on the type of business. So we talked about, talked about that, whether the business is in your name um, or the business name is your name, you're conducting business as yourself with your legal name. Um, and then the second thing was whether you were conducting business in that state. So if you are conducting business in that state, so you own a limited liability company, a partnership, a nonprofit, or a corporation, you'll most likely need to register with that state that you are conducting business in. Um, and, and that was one of the quick answers I gave to my new client who asked me that question. But remember, I mentioned that whether you're required to register with the state, um, is that's what it's going to depend on if you're conducting business in that state and if you're conducting business in your legal name. But here's how you can tell if you're conducting business in that state, if you're conducting business activities in a certain state. So four things. One, if your business has a physical presence in that state. So if your business has a physical presence in that state, then you are conducting business activities in that state. <laughs> Number two, if you are having in-person meetings with clients, with your clients in that state, that's another reason or another way to tell if you are conducting business in that state. Number three, if a good chunk of your revenue is earned or generated from that state, and it sounds like you're conducting business in that state. And then fourth, if any of your employees, if you have employees and they work in that state or you yourself work in that state and you are on payroll with your company or your business, then you are in fact conducting business in that state and will be required to register your business with that state. So I want to do, I do want to say, I mean, just a, a little bit of a caveat here. It's possible and likely that your company will conduct business outside of your state, especially with the online presence that many of our companies have. You could definitely have clients in other states, but just keep in mind that you will only need to register with the state that you primarily work in. So I just wanted to kind of throw that throw that in there so we, we don't think that we have to register our business with the 10, 15, 20 different states that we have clients in or whatever. Um, so making a decision to form a legal entity, a separate legal entity for your business will depend on several things. And so we talked about uh, some of those, but if you can say yes to any of these things that I'm going to um, list out for you. If you can say yes to any of these, then you'll need to register your business and form a separate legal entity, uh, one that is separate from you. Number one, whether you plan to have partners, employees, or outside investors. If you're going to have partners, if you're going to have employees, if you're going to have outside investors, then you will need to create a separate legal entity. You will need to register your separate legal entity with that um, state. Whether you are um, going to have significant contracts, if you're going to have contracts or creditors that might lead to potential financial issues or lawsuits, then you will need to register um, your business as a separate legal entity. For example, um, an unpaid creditor or a court judgment could easily cause personal financial trouble um, say if you own commercial real estate, I don't, I don't have any clients that own commercial real estate, I have residential um, real estate um, clients, 
but um, it's much less likely for um, consultants and like online sellers that that would be an, an, an issue. But um, unpaid creditors and court judgments could definitely be um, a personal financial issue at some point if that you know happens in your in your business. So you definitely want to make sure that you have. Um, legally defined that business as a separate legal entity from yourself. Um, another reason why you, if you say yes to this, then you will need to register your business and form that separate legal entity is whether you want to have the additional expenses of an LLC or a corporation or whatever that, that business separate legal entity is. Um, there's a hundred dollar fee, $100 fee to form an LLC in the state of Florida. And so in most states, you're going to also have to file an annual report, um, and pay an annual fee when filing that annual report. So, um, keep that in mind. So if you, um, are okay with, um, the, the cost of not only forming that separate entity, but also the annual filing of the report and the costs associated with that, then you will, you, you, you're, you're ready. You're ready to form that separate legal entity. Um, and then also keep in mind that with a, a, a LLC, you will have to have, um, or corporation, any separate legal entity, you're going to have to have its own separate bank account. And I talked about, talked about that, um, gosh, few weeks ago on this Winning and Living Golden Challenge, uh, channel, I um, came in and did a teaching on the reasons why you need a separate business bank account. So go back and, and find that teaching um, and get some information on that. But for an LLC bank account, you'll also need a federal employer identification number. Um, I, I, it's usually called an FEIN or FEID. It's also called a, a federal tax ID number. So why do we want to register our business with federal agencies? So we've talked about registering with the state. And in, in my situation, I'm talking about the state of Florida because that's the business that I conduct business in. Or that's the state that I conduct business in. So, but what, what about the federal agencies, the federal government? Legally, a lot of businesses don't necessarily need to register with the, with the federal government. Um, but there are some specific situations where it will be necessary. So um, here are a few of those instances where you would need to register with the federal government. Number one, when you are getting a federal tax ID number, there are reasons why you might need a federal tax ID number. One is for payroll purposes. Um, another is for bank account purposes. Um, and then also if you're applying for a grant or some type of credit, a loan application, then you would want to have um, that federal um, tax ID number. And so that's where you would go to the federal government to request that EIN, that federal EIN for your business. And so that's another, re another uh, one of the reasons why you would want to register your business with the federal government. Another is if you are seeking trademark protection, um, and in, in the situation with, with my new client, they are definitely going to be um, branding, um, creating a new brand for um, their apparel. And so that was one of the things that we talked about as well, was the trademark protection for um, their product, their brand. Um, but you can also seek trademark protection for your business as well. So for your business, your brand, or your product, you would definitely want to register your business with the, the federal agency. Um, number three, a nonprofit. I love nonprofits. <laughs> I, I've um, started and formed and, and, and operated and sat on the board of several nonprofits over the years. I um, am the president and CEO of my own um, uh, nonprofit that I founded years ago. Gosh, it's been 12, 13, 13 years ago now, um, SUNA Outreach Ministries. And so <clears throat> if you're a nonprofit seeking tax exempt status, then you are definitely going to have to register with the federal government. You're going to have to have that EIN 
and then you have to go to the feds to actually apply for that 501c3 um, tax exempt status. So that's another situation where you'd have to register with the federal government. And then another um, instance is with your if you're a business that's wanting to file your LLC income taxes under an S corp tax classification. So um, just a little bit of a, a tangent. S corp is not a business entity. So you have LLC, you have sole proprietorship, you have a partnership, you have corporations, and S corp is not a separate legal entity. S corp, S corp means that it is being um, taxed a certain way. So it could be an LLC, um, it could be a, a, a corporation, it could be a legal entity that's an LLC or corporation that is choosing to be taxed as an S corp. And so that's a whole different teaching as well. Maybe I'll do something separate on that, or even when I go into the teaching, um, whenever I um, do the teaching on the separate business entity types, I'll, I'll definitely talk about the S Corp so that we can make sure that we understand that, that that is not an actual business entity type. It's a tax classification category. So, um, those are the instances and, in, and, in, um, uh, situations where you would want to register your business with the federal government. So we are making some great headway. We're only 26 minutes and I've been trying to make these a little bit uh, shorter because I've had some very long teachings that I sh probably should have cut up and chopped up into part one, two, and three. But I'm trying to stay within 30 to 40 minutes and we're doing really, really good. So um, when do we want to register our business with um, appropriate local agencies? Um, just a little bit of information about this, you know, after you register your business with the federal government or your state government first, that's number one, <laughs> state is number one. And then if you need to register with the federal gov government agencies, then you do that. Um, but then you also want to look at what uh, your local government may require from you. So whether that's your city, whether that's your county, um, different, different counties and cities have different requirements. So I won't go into the details of that, but just note that certain business structures will actually call for some type of license or some type of permit from the county or the city in which your business is located. So just, you know, be aware of that. And if you are operating a certain type of business that requires that, for instance, if you're a CPA firm, then you're gonna to have to have um, that local um, license to do that. So I just wanted to you know, give a little bit of information on the local agencies. So we talked about some of the benefits, right? We talked about a lot of the, ben the benefits of, of, of forming an LLC, uh, forming that separate legal entity. But in a nutshell, um, some of the advantages of registering your business and establishing it as a, a legal entity also includes, so we talked about the, the limited liability protection, right? That your, your personal assets are protected from, from the liability of the business. Um, so that's, that's, that's the key thing I think being a legal entity offers, offers us as a benefit. Another one is you can receive certain tax benefits when you are registered as a separate legal entity. Another thing is it is easier for you to apply for and receive loans and capital in the name of the business for the actual business. Um, it just looks better when you um, are operating a business, you have established it as a separate entity. It has its own EIN. It has its own that federal tax um, ID number. Um, and that is what a lot of creditors are going to be looking for when um, you're going to apply for, for capital for your business. So, and then also if you're creating a brand, you know, that having a separate uh, legal entity will help if you're creating a business brand. It can help you build um, professional relationships for that business um, and also, you know, with, with your customers as well. So those are some of the benefits, additional benefits of uh, forming that LLC or forming that legal separate entity 
for your businesses, business or businesses and registering them with the state or with the federal government um, or with the local agency as is necessary in your situation. So to wrap up, we are at 30 minutes. Okay, to wrap up. So what did we learn today? We learned about what registration is, registering your business, what it is, what it means, why it is important. And then we talked about when, when are you required to register your business with the state of Florida, with federal agencies, and also with local agencies. And then I shared some personal, you know, dear to my heart, personal um, examples of my own separate legal entities that I created over the years um, from sole proprietorships that have a fictitious name, which is not a separate legal entity, it's still me, to my limited liability companies um, that I've also created um, and, you know, rental properties and, and the like. So shared some of that information with you. And then we talked about the advantages of registering your business. So I want to leave you with, if you are thinking about starting a business or you've already started a business, I definitely encourage you to register your business with the state. Um, I had a client one time say, well, I don't, I don't have the hundred dollars to set up the LLC or the, the $50 to set up the fictitious name. Um, if you don't have the $50 and you don't have the hundred dollars, look to friends and family, wait until you have the dollars, especially if you're going to be operating inside of a business that. Um, the chances or the probabilities of some type of lawsuit or something like that could possibly happen. Definitely, you know, get that business registered as a separate legal entity with your state before you begin conducting substantial <laughs> business activity in that state. But again, the, the state, most states, I know the state of Florida does require that if you are conducting business in their state, they are requiring you to identify yourself, to tell them who you are, what you are doing in their state. Um, if you're bringing in that revenue from their state, they want to know who you, if you if you got clients and you're just generating a lot, of, you know, like I said, a nice chunk of revenue from that state, you definitely want to register um, your, your, your business in that state. So I hope this information was helpful. I know it's probably not as beneficial for the established small businesses, nonprofits, and um, entrepreneurs, but hopefully this information is, is um, helpful. And for those of you who are like me and you're an entrepreneur, you're a small business owner, you're a nonprofit um, executive, that has been in business and you're established and you have friends and family or colleagues, share this. Please share this information with them. This is really, really good information that will help them understand why, um, how, and um, the, the advantages of registering your business in your state. So I want to thank you for joining me here, Lisa L. McLean, the Certified Financial Educator. And I'm so, so, so I'm grateful, so thankful that you decided to drop in with me for these 30, almost 35 minutes. And I will see you back here on this channel, Winning and Living Golden, where we are winning in life, in our finances, in our heart, mind, and spirit, and also in business. I'll see you guys next time. Take care until then. <laughs>